campus. Uh, I'm so pleased to be able to be here with all of you tonight. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome those of you representing the Indian government, uh, AAAS, the U.S. State Department, former scholars, and who are now uh, current UW graduate students. How many of you are, are former scholars here tonight? I think just one. No, all outside. Oh, they're all outside. Well, we can welcome them later. Past and current faculty mentors, and most especially the new cohort of students that are beginning their programs this evening. Um, as we, as Asim was just discussing, this of course is the formal launch of the SMBOs program, and so it's especially exciting to meet you students who are here who are inaugurating this program with your participation. And we've already reviewed the important contributions of BOLUS uh, and it sets uh, high standards for the participation of all of the students going forward. The BOLUS program, of course, mirrors the prestigious Karana Scholars Programs for Biologically Related Sciences. And this has been going now for six years at UW-Madison and you know, per other participating institutions. Let me remind you of the goals of this program. They are to provide encouragement to young scholars, to stimulate creativity among students, to transform research into societal benefits, and to build a seamless community between India and the United States. The Quran program has grown each year it has been in existence, and we are thrilled to be welcoming 37 students to participate in this program tonight. Our university has long considered India a partner, and my college has played a significant role in that partnership, of which we are very proud. The College of Agricultural and Life Sciences is the second largest college at our university. We have nearly 4,000 undergraduate students and over 1,000 graduate students. Our 19 academic departments span applied research conducted in departments like dairy science and horticulture and agronomy to basic science research in biochemistry, microbiology, and genetics. Our faculty are very productive and our graduate programs are very well known uh, and provide uh, a great springboard for many students entering these disciplines. But it's important to us that productivity doesn't stay within the walls of the university, that it doesn't remain only in the lab and in scholarly publication, but it, that it moves beyond campus to inform solutions to real-world problems. Some of the biggest pressures we face today in the world are impossible to pin to an individual location. Such challenges as providing safe and nutritious and abundant food people around the world in growing populations, developing sustainable energy sources, coping with a changing climate, and maintaining healthy ecosystems are concerns that can only be addressed at the global level. Furthermore, the fundamental scientific advances that are underpinning, underpinning these advances also built on international collaboration. A few decades ago, universities trained people to be experts in specific areas, building our collective knowledge by focusing narrowly to understand uh, pointed research questions. And now we find that we have a different training model, and that is uh, individual scholarship is still important, but working collaboratively across disciplines becomes ever more important because the solutions to these challenges require uh, broad expertise. They will require scientists and others that can think big, work collaboratively, and be creative in first recognizing and approaching these problems. So for me, it's inspiring to see all of these students here today, because I know that these are the types of challenges that you are looking for in your careers. As an educator, as a researcher, I hope your experiences provide you with tools that can help face those challenges. And I'm so very excited for you to unleash your creativity on finding solutions for our tough challenges. And I look forward to the solutions that you will identify. So once again, welcome to the United States and welcome to UW-Madison. Thank you very much.
to just give you a little bit of history. It really started with President Clinton. It was in the year 2000, and he made a trip to India, and he wanted to, U.S.-India relations were not so good at the time, and he wanted to do something to improve the relations, and one of the things which he thought of was some sort of science agreement, a science cooperation agreement. Well, it turns out at that time, India was under sanctions by the U.S. because of the nuclear test in 1998, and so it was impossible to make a government-to-government agreement. However, we had an ambassador in India at that time, Richard Celeste, who was who recently retired as, as president of Colorado College, and actually a great, great scholar, really a wonderful man. And he had the idea, let's do it as a public-private partnership. Let's do it, let's set it up as a private society. And actually, we are chartered. The Indo-U.S. Science and Technology Forum was the result of that. And it is chartered under uh, the, the societies of uh, 1862 or, or 1864. Um, and so the money comes, the, the endowment was, was created but with some Indian rupees which the US government owned. That was for that money was put in the bank. The interest on that bank, we get interest on that that uh, endowment, modest endowment, and the Indian government matches the interest which we get, and that has generated consistently somewhere between one and a half and two million dollars a year. Now you can't fund a whole lot of cooperative research on two million dollars a year or one and a half million dollars, but you can move some people around. And so one of our early forms of cooperating was to fund workshops. And remember, the whole purpose of this is bring American researchers, American scientists, together with Indian researchers and Indian scientists. So all of our programs are really centered around the idea of finding a common interest between groups of people. And we have found that the workshop formula, the workshop format, is a very effective way of doing this. And three times a year, now twice a year, I guess, we go out with a call, and if anyone in either country would like to get together with colleagues or maybe just on a topic we can help with matchmaking, would like to have a workshop on a given field, we are prepared to consider that on a competitive basis. We're receiving somewhere between 30 and 40 of these proposals each time we go out for a call. And we fund them as we can. But it's amazing, over the, over the last 12 years we've had something like 300 workshops We've had involved some 12,000 scientists in the two countries. And the interesting thing is that you begin to leverage money when you find people who are interested in things in both countries, money appears. We think that we have leveraged maybe $200 million or perhaps $250 million, which has been generated in programs which have been funded by governments or by companies or by someone else. So this has been a very interesting I've done a lot of science cooperation in the world in a lot of countries, but I find this one of the most interesting, imaginative, and frankly one of the most successful models which has gone on now for, for 12, 13 years. Um, interestingly, I was uh, the first U.S. chairman, and, uh, and I was able to be in that position when I was in the State Department, and when I ended at the State Department after it was a three-year appointment, as science and technology advisor to the Secretary of State, uh, then I turned to my successor or to the, the uh, higher up people in the building and I said, well, I'm leaving, but I could continue to do this. And they said, fine, Norman, you just keep on. And so maybe no one, I'm not sure if anyone wants it, maybe no one wants it back, but nonetheless, I'm, I'm still doing it and I've been through what, now two to uh, uh, Indian, Indian co-chairman, first is Ramamurti, and now is, is, uh, is Dr. Ramasamy, uh, who was just, he thought he was retiring this year, but he's just been uh, got appointed to an additional year. Uh, and his principal job, which is running the Department of Science and Technology in the Indian a very high position, and a very good one. Anyway, we have a board on each side, and we meet annually, and we talk about the direction in which the forum should be going. I think what's terrific is this 
new sort of the developing focus on students. And you've heard about the Bose program, and you've heard about the Karana program, and the RISE program, and all of these programs which move students back and forth. Now you probably know there's something like 100,000 Indian students in American universities right now, and there are about 3,000 American students in Indian universities. We particularly, we on the American side, are particularly interested in getting more Americans who can participate in some of these programs that we have catalyzed, getting more Americans involved in that, and then going and working in India. So I hope that many of you keep that in mind, make friends with some American colleagues, invite them to come to India and see what a great and interesting place it is and can be. And in that way, we will continue to build and expand these cooperative relationships. Now, the day-to-day the -day work on the Indian side is done by my colleague, who is also housed in AAAS in Washington, the American Association for the Advancement of Science. If you look on the Indo-US Science and Technology Forum website, you can find his address and you can understand more about the program. You can know when to apply for things and so on. But one of <coughs> what his, his goal, and we all share in that goal, is for us to really become the largest organization or the largest mover of students back and forth in the science field. And we probably now are already the largest mover of U.S. students and uh, U.S. graduate students uh, in India for cooperative science. So it's wonderful to see you all here. It's terrific that you haven't fallen asleep already this evening. Uh, it was even tough for me to get here from Washington. And I was told that there were three of you who were supposed to be on the plane that I was. And I asked two Indians on the plane if they were you. Anyway, great to be here, great to see you. I'm looking forward to this evening and tomorrow. Thanks.
previous DSD had been pretty aggressive in, in this area of human resource development. Uh, we initiated a scheme called Inspire, which had three uh, broad elements. The first one was uh, concerned with uh, young children at school level. The second component was concerned with uh, students at undergraduate and postgraduate level. And the third component was concerned with doctoral students and also postdoctoral fellows by virtue of by providing them kind of faculty positions uh, in regular institutions. Now, in terms of scale and in terms of inclusiveness, this scheme was enormous. This was phenomenal. I think uh, uh, I understand that we are going to award kind of 1 million fellowship few months down the line. So you can you can imagine the kind of scale and, and the inclusiveness. So many people have got benefited from this scheme. We have several other fellowships. We have JC goes. I mean, several fellowships. But I would like to touch upon few of them, which probably would concern this kind of audience. There is a fellowship called Ramanujan Fellowship, which uh, uh, enables uh, uh, Indian scientists who are working abroad to come and work in India while they don't have a regular position in any of the institutions. And while this scheme was in this scheme was launched, the compensation was back, compensation package was equivalent to you know a, a, almost uh, the kind of salary which a professor or a senior associate professor would get. There is another uh, very interesting fellowship which we have recently launched. Uh, actually, this was launched in January this year. Uh, this is called the Prime Minister's uh, Doctoral Fellowship for uh, Prime Minister's Fellowship for Doctoral Research. So this is purely on a partnership uh, mode. So uh, the student has to be registered in a regular uh, academic institution for a regular academic degree. And the, the research problem which he identifies should be of interest to interest and of relevance to industry. In turn, industry formally collaborates in this uh, <coughs> fellowship, and the fellowship which the student gets is almost <coughs> the amount which normally he gets through the government uh, support. The government provides its normal support. Then the industry provides the matching grant. And the idea here is that this student is trained to work on industry relevant problems. Normally, we find that there is quite a bit of disconnect between what research is done in academic institutions and what industry requires in reality. So, while this, this kind of, through this kind of fellowship, we want to create an ecosystem where the, industry, the research which is done in academic institutions not only it meets the academic requirements for uh, qualifying for a degree, but at the same time, it has proper industrial relevance. And industry eventually gets a kind of a person who is trained to work on these kind of problems. The uh, uh, other fellowship which uh, is already in, uh, in, in place uh, is uh, implemented through the Indo-US uh, uh, SAT Forum, uh, which is again a kind of a postdoctoral fellowship for Indian students to come and work in Indian universities for a period ranging from 3 to 12 months. I think Mr. Rajiv will be able to tell more on it. And we are soon actually, uh, the purpose of our visit uh, was also partly to go and talk to NSF. We will soon be signing an agreement on their pro initiative. So, that will also again provide opportunities for US students, doctoral students to go and work in Indian institutions of their choice for a specified period of time. Uh, the last probably significant initiative, which is again in the pipeline, it will rectify very soon, is that this is under this scheme, this is again a, be a kind of a national fellowship under which outstanding scientists anywhere in the world would be able to come and work in Indian institutions of their choice for a period of two, one year. And the Indian government will provide, will take care of the entire cost associated with this, including the, their air travel, their stay, and a decent fellowship of the order of say $100,000 per annum. So these are some of the kind of initiatives which we are contemplating in order to uh, give a major thrust to this area of uh, uh, human resource development through 
bilateral arrangements, there is again a very significant aspect of SN Force Fellowship, which was not earlier. Earlier, people used to apply, they used to establish the tie-ups, then they used to write a proposal, then they used to apply. Now you simply apply and be facilitated to connect people to the right institutions, to the right groups. And then that's how I think SN Force uh, Fellowship is being implemented, which I'm sure is a very, very positive and a very, very supportive step. So with this kind of information, I think I, I, I would also extend a very warm welcome to all of you on behalf of Department of Science and Technology, Science and Engineering Report, Engineering Report. And I'm sure that the next six weeks or so which you are going to spend here will be eventually going to be very, very useful to you. Hopefully we will be having some kind of a debriefing session a couple of months down the line. And I would look forward to seeing you.
once you go back, uh, basically, the entire whole thing, we are really looking forward to receive you directly and uh, have an interaction with you to know exactly how to improve on the program. Now, in the end, I would like to uh, particularly thank the partner in the uh, university. Of the in particular, uh, this year when we launched the SNO school, we deleted on the first time. We have only about one and a half months. Select the students and then to find them basically. And that way, it's really a good, uh, it's our very high appreciation to express for all the mentors who are ready to take to the students. And within this one and a half month, we have been able to place 46 uh, scholars, SNOs scholars, with various faculty members in the part of the university. So, this credit goes to you all, actually, and also. Uh, I will say the, the uh, Wisconsin University, the way they have created uh, the uh, broad value of Purana program that has acted as a successor, uh, uh, predecessor and also helped us in the beginners, uh, mentors in the corner, as an scholars. So, uh, so same way I would like to also, I am also looking forward to that uh, uh, you will help us in finding some good U.S. student and uh, again S.S. Moscow and other uh, places. Thank you very much and I look forward to working with you. Technology is failing us. Let's pull out the button. Why don't you try again? Can you hear me now? Yeah. I think so.
be there, so I try to be very brief. I think I think was on target in making the point that what is happening in, in, for the last few years in relation to the Koran and both programs have become a model for us in the Division of International Studies and I would say across the campus. As you know, we are very interested in developing relationships with India in particular, but not only with India. But the Koran and Boss program is in many different ways a unique program, a program that we could use and we are using actually as a pattern or as a way to proceed in the relationship in how we build relationships with other institutions and other countries that are of primary importance to us. I would like to say that uh, probably you already know that the, the campus has an uh, India initiative. And I remember having discussion with our colleagues not too long ago when they say, come on, why, why do we talk about the initiatives we have been doing in Indian studies for longer than 50 years? No? It, 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 we, initi we initiated the Indian initiative 50 years ago and not just five or ten years ago. And my answer is that that's true. No, the university has been building up its resources in terms of faculty and students over a, year, over a number of years. We have a strong language program uh, offering language instruction for Tamil, Urdu, Hindi, Sanskrit. Uh, we have a number of faculty that process every possible discipline in our campus. But it's obvious, and I think it's important to recognize that we are entering into a different stage, you know, in which basically India is playing a more prominent role, and we would like to be very much involved in that process, and to learn from you in during this in that process. So that's how we see also the interaction with Indian institutions at this point. It's a two-way street. It's not that we are going, we are in a position just to offer you resources, we see this as an opportunity to learn from you during the time you are here. I would like to take that opportunity to acknowledge a partnership that has been especially important to us. This program, the Koran program in particular, started basically as a UW Madison enterprise. But over the years, other, other the universities that are in very close relationship with us wanted to join the program. And actually, we also wanted them to join into this effort. So I would like to acknowledge in particular the colleagues that are, can, me, are part of the CIC. This is a consortium that groups the most important universities in the Midwest. And it's my understanding that we have representatives from different universities and from the Central Administration of the CIC with us, no? and the particular here on my right side. So we are extremely happy that we are not alone in this effort, but we are with them joining uh, forces in order to make the best of this program. Also understanding that this program has the potential for a significant work. And we cannot do it alone, and we shouldn't be doing this alone. So in that sense, I think we are extremely happy that to be in a position to develop this partnership, not only with our colleagues in India, with institutions in India, but also with our counterparts in the region, in the in particular. Finally, I would like to make a special call to the students that are here, and this has to do with a conversation that I have had several times with a city in particular over coffee, beer, or in many different circumstances, which is the following. Many people would see that this is an opportunity for you to, for networking, but I think uh, we see it in a more, I would say, expanded way. We see this really as an opportunity to develop relations that are going to last over the year. You are going back, you are going to go back to India, and our hope is that a number of students from Wisconsin and other members of the CSC are going to go to, to India too. But I think basically what we hope is that these relationships are not going to be limited to the time you spend here in our campus during the summer or in any other campus within CIC but you will be in a position to develop relationships that are not going to be only academic, but also personal and political institutions that are going to be extremely favorable for the relationships between India and the U.S. in years to come. Finally, I would like to tell you that, uh, as I was referring at the start,
now that uh, Indian studies has been very uh, an important part of what we do here at UW with my son, Professor John Elder is here with us who is actually responsible for many things we do here in relation with the Indian studies that has been the case for a number of years. So you will find this as a welcome place, not only as, as a welcoming place, but a place that is, has made a strong effort to be as familiar and as, as, as close as possible to India for a number of years. You will find out, for instance, that we have one of the largest collections of Indian studies here at UW campus. And I don't want to bother uh, or you with more information of this sort. The, other, the main point I want to make is we have a long history of a study of people, students, and faculty visiting and working on India. And you will see many possibilities of interaction actually this summer with the students who are going to come to be part of the Language Institute that is usually is organized every year for the South Asian Studies Program. In any 